Stephanie Kwame here from the CAD Academy. The design process usually begins with the client contacting the architect or the architectural firm and wanting uh, to do a specific project. So then the first thing that happens is they have an initial contact where they meet together and they talk about the scope of the project. So the scope of this project is there is an existing building and today we're going to draw in the existing building and the owners want to have an addition put on this house but they want that addition to look like the existing that kind of blends in with the environment. Some of the things that they want for this new addition is the um, husband wants a workshop. He's going to buy, he's retiring, he wants all these tools he is going to be uh, doing projects himself. So he wants a big space uh, and he has power considerations with the equipment that he's going to be purchasing and he knows exactly the equipment that he's going to be purchasing. There will also be a space in the new addition for the wife and it is her studio, she's artistic. But in this space they both want it to be flexible so say they have an extra guest and they don't have a place to put them they could go and stay in the her studio so there will have to be you know a restroom of some sort and also maybe a mini kitchenette in her space as well and um, there are some financial considerations but what is interesting from past experience of building a commercial building and a residential building that those just fly out the door when you decide you want something or you want something specifically for the pro for your project and uh, but anyway uh, you talk about the financial um, situation as well and the architect might have a piece of paper and do bubble designs in general if you're an architect you know how to draw with a pencil and paper so again, if your instructor is having you do board drafting, that's a wonderful thing because it, at, at some point in time, you're going to be doing that. And also, uh, you need to be fairly good at math because you'll be calculating square footage, at the, you know, maybe right in front of the client and maybe you, you don't have your CAD machine and um, you'll be uh, trying to describe something you think would be nice and uh, as an example, then you have to do a, a quick sketch of it. So sketching is very important as well. So you uh, will say that we've had our uh, preliminary meeting. We've had the initial contact with the customer. And they gave us the plans for the existing. And again, they wanted to blend in with the existing. And so we are ready to begin with some preliminary drawings. Now, one of the best things about a building information program and, and ARCHICAD in particular is that no matter what you do you can change it so nothing is just dyed in wool and it's easy to change it and you change it once and it's reflected everywhere so it's a great package to work with so let's go ahead and start our new we're going to do a new and we are going to create a new uh, project and if I say current profile, say I have a lot of customization that I've done with the menuing schemes, then I would leave it there. But if you haven't, then this brings on a standard profile that has a lot of key things that make it easy to work with the program. So we're going to use the standard profile. One thing that the architect and I discussed is some changes that we might make and so immediately I have some um, things that we can do that will make it easier for us in the long run. First thing I do is I use this tool here to make the drawing area as large as I can and um, these are elevation markers they don't print or plot but they help with doing the elevations uh, from the program that they automatically do the elevations from these markers these are your drawing tools over here and uh, this is like on wall if I clicked on this this is the wall considerations and so the first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna talk layers 
Now layers can have different pen types. Actually, objects have different uh, pen types. But if I use a hotkey control L, that brings up my layering scheme. And what we want to do is we want to do a new layer. And I'm going to call this A dash existing. So we decided that it would be great to have a layer to put on the existing walls. And then you can de emphasize them with a lighter pen type or you could emphasize them or do whatever you want because you at some on some of the plans you might want to know how this connects with the existing. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to walls and get started here. And this gentleman always wanted something different. There is nothing in favorites right here that worked for him. So what we did is the first thing we would do is that we create a favorite wall or a, a something that we can work with which will become standards for us in this program. So every time we uh, want to do an exterior wall we'll be using the favorite so everything will be the same. And normally a CAD manager might be doing this, getting all those standards together, but we can easily do that. So we go from this existing data here and we're going to say that our standard is nine feet tall, our wall is, and measuring from there is okay with us and the wall thickness is going to be six inches and uh, we want this to be uh, concrete uh, or um, block concrete construction and we want to show it with masonry right there, masonry block. And we can also, since we know what it is, we can also arrow over here and uh, find some block here and it would kind of uh, show what it's going to look like as well. And I think we do have CMU block here, so we're going to show that. Now, this is not going to go on a wall exterior, however. This one is going to go on our A existing that we called it. So we, there's our new layer that we have, has made. This will say, if I turn this off and on, the geometry becomes wireframe or solid. This turns on or off a layer and that locks it for editing. So we're going to just pick that one and so now that's on existing so we like everything about that. And so we go up to favorites and now we're going to save this as our A wall CMU 6 inches and say OK. And we are actually going to also come up with some interior wall styles. But right now we're just going to work with some ex existing exterior walls. And there is a um, quick start handout on this project. So if you forget what the dimensions are and you wa are following along, then uh, you can use a quick start as well. But anyway, so now I've got my information. I'm set to that particular wall that's in my favorite, which is um, this wall right here and you say apply and it applies the uh, everything that you specified about the wall there and now let's start with our existing what we existing have they have a separate garage so we're going to put the garage here and we'll move it into it, the correct position later but the garage existing garage is 26 feet 8 inches so I can do 26 dash 8 and this will whoops dash 8 and this will de uh, default defeat. And it's okay if we're over here, we can move it. Now we're going to come down this direction, 26. And again, this is 26.8. Uh, and so again, 26-8 is an easy way to put that in. And with this little hammer, we have a closure. So there is where the garage is. We are. This will actually fit on a quarter inch equals a foot. Uh, with the existing but so I'm just kinda drawing over there and again uh, don't worry about that that works out okay so now let's put in some of the existing house so we'll start up here and again we may have to move these things but that's okay okay I'm gonna start and we're gonna head down here 78 so it's long the customer has a huge huge lot in the desert and it's in an area with all custom homes it's 22 
this direction and it again has uh, various uh, it's on a lot that has um, contours we're going up here 50 feet we're going over this direction 10 feet and then notice if I need to I can drag this and come up and down and then let's come up 12 feet we'll go over here for 10 Oops, I think that I didn't mean that. We meant we want to go over there. So I use backspace to back that out because I didn't mean that. So if you do something you don't like or it's crooked, use the backspace. This is actually 2 feet 10 inches, so 2 10 is what I really wanted. And then we come up here, and that is 16. And then that should close. So that is their existing. That's a long building. Let's take a look at it. And because of the contours that are uh, on this lot, uh, this our uh, addition is going to be going out this way uh, because they have plenty of space. And uh, the original architect put different roof types along this so that you would have a different experience on the interior in different uh, living spaces. So if, if he wanted it large and expansive, he might put on a, um, you know, like a very tall gable or um, something like that. We're going to go back to the first floor. And one thing, let's find out how much square footage is in the existing. So we can go over here to zone and we'll just go ahead and select this and um, oh, what I meant to do is we didn't have it on automatic this would this with the selection I have here always be aware of what's up here on this info box so if I do zone this goes out and does the interior uh, out to the interior and the other goes out to the exterior so we'll select here put the text in and let's go up and see how much area the existing is. It's 1,929 square feet plus their uh, ex uh, garage. So it's a pretty uh, good sized um, living space. Let's check out the garage here by using the zone as well. So we're going to select this text here. Let's check how much they have in the garage. So that's 642 feet. So we do have 642, and then if you consider this space over here of 1929, so if you don't think that this architect sits by me with pencil and paper doing, and he also has a, a electronic calculator on his uh, desktop, He's constantly ca calculating things and figuring things. And um, so, again, if you thought that you wouldn't have any more math when you got here, that is incorrect. So you might say yeah, they have 2571 under roof because they've got both of these, uh, these buildings on site. So we're not going to do too much with the existing except for uh, showing the shape of the existing. And this ends our lesson one. And if you want to go out and test and try what we did here, that would be great. And on our next lesson, we're going to start with the new edition. Thanks for listening.